today we're going to undertake a series of discussions with Ross McCarthy, a senior behaviourist. He's going to discuss with us some of the cases and some of the behavioural issues that we as practitioners deal with in the Canine and Feline Behaviour Association. Ross, perhaps one of the most unusual behaviours and perhaps one of the most unacceptable that owners find that their dogs may perform is known as coprophagia or faeces eating. Uh, we know from research that it's not just about diet, it can be a learned behaviour, especially if puppies have gone through areas of socialisation that it's encouraged, kept in pens with older dogs where there is faecal matter lying around. This is a behaviour that needs to be dealt with very carefully because owners can reinforce it. What's your experience and do you have a particular case that would give an example of how you would deal with it? Yeah, I do have um, a case example and it's interesting that you said about competition. The, the case I saw most recently was two Labradors walking in a park and it had gone from eating poo that they may have stumbled across to actively seeking it out. So their whole purpose in the park was not to play with other dogs, was not to sniff and do what dogs do. It was a mission to find faeces to eat. And there were two of them, so there was competition involved as well with the two dogs. And with all of the behavioural issues that I see, I tend to look at the whole picture. So as opposed to just looking at the problem and dealing with that in the park, I look at the whole of the dog's lifestyle, the way that the owners are with the dog, their level of obedience training, diet, and all manner of, of the dog's life. So I did change the diet for the dogs to a more appropriate, what I deemed a more appropriate natural diet, rather than some of the processed pet foods which I believe can induce coprophagia. And in addition to the diet change, I also got the owners to start changing the dynamics in the park. So rather than just arriving at the park, letting the two dogs off lead and they go off on their hunt, we started changing that. So they started doing a little bit of training at the, be at the beginning of their walk. We also taught a whistle recall so that the dogs would come back. And of course, being Labradors, their stomach ruled their mind. So coming back, hearing a whistle, coming back for a food reward, the dogs very quickly learnt that that was actually more rewarding than going off looking for poo. Yeah. That's interesting because the scenario you give is a perfect case where the competition between the two dogs increases and it's the first to it. And I've seen a lot where the owner competition, where the dog believes the owner wants it, actually increases the behaviour. And the motivation to change that is also interesting because it does involve advanced training techniques. It does involve giving a reward whistle and making sure the reward's sufficient. When you've got a dog that is food orientated, as you said, that's, that's probably the easiest side of it. But to change the whole process and undo this idea that the dogs would just go straight into the park and that would be the first job to do is quite interesting. Motivating the dogs to come back, perhaps random recall, making the motivation for coming back, a very rewarding experience, is often the first step to changing what is really a difficult behaviour. And many years ago, it was a reason for euthanasia in dogs, and that's on the veterinary record. So to change it in a, a behavioural process is perhaps a very significant step to, to the future. But thank you, Ross. That's very interesting, as all areas of our work is interesting, not only to other people, but especially to us. Thanks for coming today to discuss your cases. Mm -hmm.